fishing 80. That was the white track that I got there. You'll be the life of the party. What do we do tonight? <laughs> we can laugh about it. <laughs> what do we do? The preacher. The preacher. Let me just The preacher. The only thing we did was lighten the load. The preacher ran like a rape, you know what? Fantastic. We burned another ton of fuel. We ran to a place where there were a bunch of <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I don't care. The Italians on this channel don't mind. I can make fun. Just like, I mean, people say, I can't believe you said the Ching thing. The Ching thing was a joke. It was a joke from back in the day when I saw a stand up guy. I left my fish on. Oh, shit. <laughs> Gotta open that thing. I'm gonna fix that fish. So I'm gonna keep talking. Alright, so we're, we're here. So what we did was our play was we were gonna go out and tune the fish. So what happens to the tuna fish? People say, like, don't tell them what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. We get out there, we got numbers from our boys. Big nuts, big nuts for two, right? Says go out here, shoots me a thing. I'm like, all right, I'm all, all more for that. It's a, it's a pretty far run for me, but we got the cash, we're gonna burn the gas. We got the preachers running like a son of a gun. So what we do, we go out there. I'm running the boat, putting the sun ahead, blah, 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 getting the speed right and everything, all that jazz. Next thing you know it, Fish on, wide tracker. Sterling wide tracker. Should I show you the Sterling wide tracker it was on? No. The PO box? <laughs> no. No. Because what happened was nobody's gonna take a we, we think it's Club Soda Kenny. He's not he's not he's of denying you think it. It's me. So you work the deck, right? Next thing you know what the freaking rod gets whacked by a monster fish. You took the bait? Yeah, the whole thing. Took out bait. We gotta stay one more time. That was a legit bite. So as he rebates that right now, um, I'm driving. I look over to my starboard side. The rod gets whacked, goes down, and then it goes into Pluto. It goes from there, up and out. Mach 2, like like literally a Lord's rocket was shot out of my uh, rod holder. It went down, came up a little bit, turned. 50 wide. It's over there. Somebody catch it. Enjoy it, alright? It's on me. Also, a wide tracker. I have to buy another one. You think Steve over at Sterling Tackle is going to say, toolbox? You think I'm going to give you another one of those? I'm, not, I'm going to have to pay for this one. I'm not happy about that. No offense. It's my fault. Not my fault. One of these guys' fault. But they're not going to take ownership of it. Don't you dare blame me for this. Who gets blamed for that? Uh, obviously, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, bottom line is, when we set our rods out, we always put leashes on them. I don't like to... Look, I, it ultimately it's my fault, of course it's my fault, because I should check everything out and make sure everything's going as planned, but it's not. No leash is ultimately always the captain's fault, so it's my fault. What happens is, we're minus 150. I gotta go buy another 50, I gotta go buy another Sterling White Tracker, because what happened with Sterling White Trackers today? Do they work? Oh yeah, they work very well, because we had one left and it got hit twice. We had the fish on it, and what happened? Boing! That's number two we lost. We didn't lose the rig, we didn't lose anything, we just lost the fish. Michael got a little nervous, right? What did you, what did you do? How'd you lose that fish? It spit the hook. He just said it spit the hook. Are you sure nah, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a no, uh, skipjack. That sk was a skipjack. Michael's fine tuned with these tuners, so he knows exactly the species. So, so the skipjack man. hit it, and we lost that fish too. Right. Redeploy this white tracker into the spread. Ba boom, three times a lady. And we lost that one too. So I think I'm gonna go into like what do you think? Painting? I think I can get like five hundred I can get five hundred grand for my paintings. 
I think I could. You're gonna need it. I'm gonna take up golf. Candy's gonna take up golf. So that's the way. This is what he's going. Do I put this video up? Is it fishing? Technically, it's fishing. Is it? Is it ugliness? Uh, I don't know. Look at Roy. I'm gonna show you a picture of Roy's jacket right now. Look at this. Look at that video saying. We got a pulp around Roy, how, how do you feel? I'm, feel, I'm completely disgusted. Yeah. Hey, well, you should do that to him. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Mark, how do you feel? I feel completely disgusted. Look at that. Look at this outfit he's wearing. Twenty-year-old Elias Saloon. Captain Keith. I don't know if you still watch this channel, Captain Keith. But oh, Lice Saloon, yeah, of course, Captain Keith, he's out there, comment below. This thing is we got old school. 20 years old. Works in a little bit of Natty Light. I got a Natty Light, believe it or not. And, uh, so, uh, that's it. That's a wrap. Stay tuned. It's great to what? fish with these guys. Don't bring nothing. Don't bring any beer. Don't bring any food. Yeah. Don't bring any gear. Thank God. Because we're, we're going to need you to help clean fish. Yeah. yeah. So now he can't sue us now for a boring no, day. No, no, no. You can't sue us if you didn't put money in. You can't you sue. Zero expectations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no expectation. If you dumped a couple of bean bags in, then you got you get yell at us. I got a vault. <laughs> I saw that you have it, Roy. Roy didn't spend a penny there. All he tried to give you money wasn't happening. And he can't complain if we didn't catch any fish. We did have a shot at them, all right? All right, so now I'm getting so much freaking emails about my rant last, last week's rant. One person said, and, and I respect the response to that person. One says you're going to lose half your audience for getting political on your uh, YouTube channel. Just a couple things on that note. One, this is my YouTube channel and I'll do what I want. I'm not going to listen to a viewer who's offended how I decorate my own home. That's not happening. That's not That's not even close to what's going to happen here, okay? And secondly, I get another email, and I'm, I'm not going to blow this, but I'm going to put the post up right up here. This is the response that I get. When you look at the math and all the DMs and the emails I'm getting, plus all the thumbs up and thumbs downs in, in YouTube, you see that extremely high on the pro Kiko Cheese movement there, all right? And it's not a movement, it's just facts, all right? It's tough when you, you, you can't argue and I'm going to say the left, I mean, it's left liberals, whatever you want to call it. Right here, I'm not going to expose who this person is because this person is obviously, the ignorance kind of shows in this in this, in this this response. And this is what we're we dealing with. And I refuse to, what they try to do is they try to silence me. They're going to silence me. No, no, I'll do whatever the heck I want on this channel. What I say has nothing to do with the sponsor of, of this channel. It's if These are my opinions only. And I say that at the end of every video I do, as you can see that, all right? But let me read this out. i got to read this out right now. It says, disappointing you, Captain Mark. I'm not sure why you're bringing politics into your fishing channel. I didn't know I had to ask this person what I need to do on my channel. So that ain't happening either, all right? He says, so you support Trump 2024, a white supremacist masquerading as American patriots. So basically that, in essence, is if I vote for Donald Trump, I am a racist white supremacist. I mean, how stupid is that? Really, how stupid is that to think like that, all right? And you wonder why this this division is happening. I mean, that's just completely stupid to say something like that. It's ignorance, and you can't fix stupid. You really can't. I, I, I just, that's my only argument right now, all right? Uh, you speak about your duty as a police officer patrolling the uh, black ghettos. I don't think, if you want to go back in the video, I don't recall calling them black ghettos. However, all your views are one-sided. You are speaking from upper class middle white man. Okay, well, let's give you a little history on the Gary kids, all right? My father's first generation. I'm one of seven kids. Four of us, four boys, five boys really, and two girls. Three bedroom house. All the boys slept in one room on the trundle beds. We slept together. We'd go to school, we had no money. My father worked his ass off to put himself through night school and feed his family. All right, so don't, don't judge me. Don't even think about judging me. We went to school potato salad sandwich. We had nothing. We lived in a little room you'd call it a torture chamber right now. But we never complained, all right? We loved it. My point is, my father never said, hey, when I get up, he, he, here's money for a car. No, every one of us worked our asses off. My first car was $300. I loved it. I made, made my own money myself. I worked in a pizza hut. Made my own money, bought my own car, insured my own car. That's what you do, all right? Now, you, 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 you're saying that Black people can't do that? Is that what you're saying? Spanish people can't do that? Of course they can do that. I'll, I'll show you a thousand, I'll show you a million black people that disagree with your freaking philosophy. You can't say that black, just like critical race theory. You're gonna, you're gonna, a, a, a person right now who's being born over at Stony Brook Hospital right now who's a white baby, that baby's born a racist? Are you out of your mind? And 
the, a black baby born there is going to go nowhere in their life? Is that what you're going to teach these people? You're going to teach black kids that just because you're born, you're oppressed, and you're never going to get anything, so just rely on the government? Hell, if I, if my father said, hey, let, let the government take care of us. Let's go on a government dole. We would have been fine. We would have ate food. No, but my father didn't do that. My father worked his ass off, taught us to work our asses off to get what we have here, okay? This could be done by anything. It's called the American dream. Black people can do it. Spanish people can do it. White people can do it. Asian people can do it. Martians can do it, all right? So don't pull people back because of race. That's ridiculous, all right? And I'll, let me tell you one other thing. If I lived in a neighborhood where people were getting shot in like Chicago or everything, I would beg the cops to stop every person that walked on that street and say, hey, you got a gun on you? Because I did it. You, you make reference here about the Dirty 30 up in the 3 -0. In, 19, in the 80s. You know who's at in the Dirty 30 in the in, in 1980s working the streets up there? I was. 100% stacked uh, on the bio. I was up in the 3 the 3 4 doing street crime. Taking guns off the streets. Why? Because you could drive a car there and literally stop the car, sit for a second, hear gunshots go off and people being killed. That's what happened in the 80s, alright? I'm not sure where this person was in the 80s, but I guarantee you he wasn't standing by my side or her side. Whatever this is. This is a, a nurse here, believe it or not. Alright? And saying that... Uh, not all cops are racist, but we just want you to do your job and keep your freaking knees off our necks and protect and serve. Really? I mean, really? You want to take and keep your knees off? Tell me one cop in the world that says, hey, you know, not for nothing, that showing case, that was, a, that was a great tactical move, putting your knee in that guy's neck for that long. Not one person agreed with that. Not one. Not one. All right? So that's one person. Let me tell you another thing about this, because I'm dealing with a nurse here who's making this comment here, is I was in the hospital for a long freaking time, longer than probably anybody, all right? And I've had my share of nurses. I love nurses. Nurses save my ass, bottom line. But there were a couple of nurses there that I had experience with that should not be nurses. They should be maybe day school. I, they should not be nurses. They don't have the skill set to be a nurse. They were terrible. But that was just a few, a few, and that's in every business, okay? So you mold all cops into this one bad mold. I could mold all nurses into that, no, but I won't because they were beautiful nurses that saved my ass. And if it wasn't for them, I'd be dead. So I never say, you know, all nurses suck. That's not even close to true. Nurses are great. They saved my ass. They're humane, great people. I would never categorize your livelihood as bad because of one nurse. Bottom line. So just, I mean, the ignorance is just so bad. You know, it's like, you, you, you try to, you know, when you're dealing with people that deal in, in, in feelings and not facts, it's, it's so hard to argue with these people. It just, you just, perfect example, some of you in my house leave my house the other day, yeah, you know, Donald Trump, he's, he's a racist. Yeah, he's a, I go, he's a racist? How's he racist? Pfft, you don't know he's a, how he's a, there's no argument. There's no fundamental fact that you say he's a racist. He's not a racist. It's just such a, a washed out word now. Racism, white supremacy. What are you talking about? I mean, that's so stupid. Just think about what you're saying. And you have nothing to, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a white, how am I a white supremacist? Just give me a fact, tell me, because I didn't know that, tell me how I am. You know, that, that's my argument. Well, tell me how Donald Trump is a, is a, is a white supremacist. Tell me how he's an anti-Semite. Are you really a mind? Just do the facts, not your feelings. I get it. I get you guys have feelings and that's what you act on. You don't do, do the work on facts. But fact of the matter is, I was up in the 3 4 3 0 back in the days. I wasn't hurting people, I wasn't doing anything. What I was doing, I was taking guns off the street. Every gun I took, which is a heck of a lot, because if anybody knows me in this video, you know that I was up there doing doing the deed. They can, you know, stopping people saying, hey, how you doing? I never said, hey, stop, and use the N-word. Hey, yo, N-word, get on the wall, I'm gonna shoot you in the head, or you know, so hey, it's, it's, a, it's a very soft stop. It's called the UF 250. Back in the day, Julianne days, and prior to that. You say, walk up to goes, hey, hey, guys, hey, guys, anybody carrying here? That's it. Hey, guys, carrying? No, 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 okay, you might. Yeah. Because if, if if, if there was a 9-11 that maybe there was a script that was somebody like that, you say, you stop the guy, hey guy, well, how you doing? Very soft stop. He knows you're in command of the stop. You and your partner guy can pretty much control the stop. You say, hey guy, how you doing? You carry? No. Are you mind if I check? No problem. Boom, boom, boom. When the guy takes off and pulls the gun out, that's what happens a lot up there. It was, it was, it was a wild west up there back in the day. No doubt about it. I, like I said, you're talking about somebody who freaking walked the walk, bro. Ask anybody, do your background check on me, do your due diligence, and you know I'm not talking at my ears here, all right? So, 
that's what was back then. Uh, never once do we say, you know, let's go up there and s attack all the Spanish today and see if they got guns. No, we walked up there, we worked, put our lives on the line like crazy f to make these people feel better. Not only so that we'd drive down the block and we'd have people applaud us, the neighbors, because they loved that the cops were out there trying to police the neighborhood and stop the sickness that's going on, sickness that's happened in Chicago. Here's another thing that, that just throws me off so much, and you want to go back to this white supremacist Donald Trump, right? Mayor of Chicago. Donald Trump says, I'll give you any resource you want to stop this violence in your neighbor. Any federal agents, any police agents you need, I will help you. President Trump unloaded on Chicago. He noted the rise in shootings and named specific victims. That's what we call tyranny and dictatorship. And we are not having it in Chicago. We've got to redouble our efforts to call upon the federal government to help us stop the flow of illegal guns into our city. You cannot be serious! And it's been like that for so many years. And it's, it's like I say, my definition of uh, insanity, you just keep doing the same thing and you expect a different response. Back in the days when I made the comments about Obama, I, I, wasn't, pretty cl I wasn't clear enough on my last rant, being honest with you, about the Obama comment. And you say, oh, how do you like Obama? Me, personally, I didn't like Obama. Did I do eight years prior to that when he was president on my channel bash Obama? No, I never got involved in that. But when you start telling me what I can and can't do on my channel, now nah, that ain't gonna work for me. So now I will tell you why I'm like Obama, okay? And this is my personal experience with him, okay? I was an Obama homicide guy, all right? Back in the day, when he would come into town, he would tell everybody, to keep the police away, but I don't wanna be seen with the police. I mean, now how, would this, how, how disgusting it's to hear something like that when you're the cops. You know, you, your presence comes, but he wants you nowhere near him. He doesn't wanna be associated with you. I'm like, what? I mean, we're out here, Literally, and that's protecting him from everybody, and this guy doesn't even want to be seen with us. I was like, how offensive is that? I mean, I've, I've been a, seen offensive things like I was in 9/11. Well, the garbage in 9/11 was horrific. All right, that raised, that was up there, almost that that bad to me. That 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 he didn't want to even be seen. I was like, whoa, wow, that blew me away. And then when you start seeing him make judgment on police officers and shootings and saying that the police officer was wrong, when in fact the police officer was right, is disgusting to us. Okay? Another thing, you invite Black Lives Matter into the White House, into the White House, our White House, and you're saying that they, 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 they have a voice in the White House. They're, they're cop killers. They want to fry cops. I mean, are you out of your mind? Now, let's transition into Donald Trump. Why do I love Donald Trump? Why? Because he loves the police. Isn't this fine? Do you find this strange? And this is, again, feelings and facts. Do you find it strange that every law enforcement agency backed Donald Trump and nobody, Joe Biden, don't you find that strange? Isn't that alarming to you that nobody wants back? Even the NYPD, who doesn't endorse anybody publicly ever, went out there and on a limb and said, I endorse Donald Trump. Donald Trump gets off a plane. What does he do? He makes it his business to go over and shake every freaking cop's hand. I mean, do you feel how liberating that was for police? And said, hey, I'm going to transition this one thing. But do you realize how nice it is to be a cop watching TV and see the President of the United States all go over and acknowledge the cops? I mean, I was like freaking blown away. I couldn't believe it. Another thing. I'm a whole bomb cop. MS-13 was running amok, completely out of control. Literally, I have cases where they're cut people, trying to cut people's heads off. Whatever, that's all business, whatever. But what happens now? I retire. Who comes into office? Donald Trump. What happens? Homicide go. <laughs> he unleashed the federal government and the police and say, get these guys out of here. And MS-13 didn't know where the shit went their wristwatch when Donald Trump came into office. They, they, they didn't know where to run. That's really the fact of the matter. Look it up, check your books. Fact check that, but that's the facts. Look at the homicide statistics under Obama. Look at them under freaking Donald Trump. It's it's like so bad that they didn't replace retiring homicide detectives. That's how bad it was. He gave the police the ability to be the police, what they do. And what they do, they just go after bad people, not good people. Just get that into your freaking memory bank, all right? Don't make me start on the George Floyd thing, okay? I mean, I'm going to save that for another day because I can go on for hours with that. I want to clarify one thing with George Floyd. No way, no how was that good to go for police officer and nail, nail the guy's neck. You're never gonna hear that from anybody. Let's just make that clear so I don't get the, everybody going nuts on me on that. But let's, let's, we'll talk about that some other time, all right? But I, that's my rant right now. You have these people send these emails, I'm so disappointed. If that's the case, I have no problem. The beauty about America, all right? Why people die for this flag. It gives you the ability to not watch me. You, you think that I went, oh my goodness gracious, I just got a text, I just got, thank you. I just got an email from that guy right there. He's not happy. He's disappointed with me. He's disappointed with me. He's like, okay. Okay, cool. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. But don't even think for a split second that I give a monkey's beanbag about 
you being disappointed in me for speaking what I want to speak about. You will not silence me. And that's that's the that's the kid the new thing for kid coach I thought. I'm not gonna be silenced. I implore everybody out there to speak up and speak the truth. The truth, not fiction, not feelings, just the facts. And and the facts are the facts. I mean let's be realistic now. Okay? So that's it for Kid Coach Isatos this episode. Facts, all right? Just like I went back fishing the other day. What happened? We were atrocious. Tuna fishing is it's difficult for me, all right? I'm segueing and a rant into my tuna fishing here. But tuna fishing is tough, man. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I did, I'm doing things wrong. Me and my crew are doing things wrong. But what's good about this, the moral to this whole story, and, and I have nothing to do with that rant. It has to do with my failure. And not my failure, my team's failure. Because tuna fishing is a team sport. Okay, everybody's got a job to do and everybody's got to do it cohesively or else things are going to fail, okay? It's like a golf swing. If you do something wrong in the, in the working of a golf swing, just one minor fault of that golf swing, head down, hands right, feet right, if one of those things is wrong, the swing will fail, all right? How's that for some freaking crazy ass talk right now? I, 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 I want to equate that to a golf swing, all right? So if you forget to put your head down or have your hips right, that fair, that 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 shot that you just took is supposed to go that way. It's not gonna go that way. It's gonna fail. Something's gonna be wrong because one little piece of that puzzle was missing. Same thing with tuna fishing. All right. So failure is great, people. Kids out there who watch this video, failure is fantastic because failure makes you a better person. So my the moral to the story is we screwed up. We forgot the leashes. Are we gonna forget the leashes next time? No, we're not gonna forget the leashes. We learned our lesson. We failed, and we learned. There's nothing, there's no freaking better way of learning than failing. Don't ever, fathers, mothers out there, don't ever, ever pull a wool over your kid's eyes and tell the kid's the best kid, even if he did something wrong, if he wins, he needs to throw. Just let the kid fail. Let him be his kid because what that does, it makes the kid better. That's what my father did with us, man. We failed like, like sons of guns. We were out, we did it ourselves. We were rich kids like this. <laughs> think the same way we were. My father, I didn't know my father that well until I became an adult because he worked his ass off. And we all worked our asses off our kids. What we do when we became adult, when we became of age, we got jobs. We got stupid little menial jobs. I washed dishes in a pizza hut. That's what my job. All right, is that a menial job? Well, that's what the Spanish do now. That's what I did back then. It's a, it's a noble job. Okay, what that do? I, I was like, I washed dishes like a maniac. And at the end of the day, the guy gave me money. I'm like, holy crap, this is mint. I went back there, couldn't wait back, go back the next day and wash more dishes. And and he's like, kid, wash dishes, yeah. Wash dishes. That's what I did. If I my next job, then I drove a truck. I did a lot of crazy ass jobs, but stupid jobs. But jobs that made me money, made me think of the American way, capitalism. Hey, say if I work, I can get this. Well, if I work hard, I can even get that. That's the way to go, bro. So if you're black, white, Hispanic, don't freaking be held down by these people. You can do whatever the hell you please to do. Don't ever be fooled by this critical race theory crap. If you're black, Hispanic. You guys can do whatever you want. This is a free world. Nobody in the world is going to stop you. And I implore you not to be freaking to give up on any of that stuff. All right? That's what Kid Coach Cheese is about. I love you guys all. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian. I know I said the, the Chinese thing was funny. You got to admit. It goes back to a joke back in the day. I mean, I feel bad for comedians. Like you can't even make a joke anymore. Isn't that crazy? That's how bad these people are. You can't even make a joke anymore. Oh, my God. Get over it, all right? Kiko Cheese out, rant number two. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't ever, ever apologize for loving God, all right? That's another thing that we're being stifled on, but don't ever apologize for being God. I want to give a hat tip to my man Kenny. Romans 10.10. 10. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, all right? All lives matter. Romans 10.10. 10. Kenny, thanks for that one, kid, all right? Everybody, take care. Kids out twice.